In this lesson, we will find a confidence interval for the difference of two means. So our question here is we have some data and we're looking for a significant difference between battery life in minutes of brand name versus generic batteries. Now, we're going to go through how to find this with a test, but statistics hopefully should make sense. So it all should sort of go together. So before we make a confidence interval or perform a hypothesis test, I want to just look at our data. So I've done this ahead of time, obviously, and I went into StatCrunch and found the summary stats for each, and then I made some parallel box plots. Now just looking at these box plots and looking at the mean and the median of each of my values, it seems pretty clear, particularly with the box plot, that I'm going to expect generic batteries to outlast the brand name batteries. Again, I haven't done a statistical test to prove that, but it looks pretty clear from the picture. So we're going to go ahead and do a confidence interval in just a moment, but again, talk about the conditions and assumptions for just a minute, the independence assumption, and again, we're looking at individual as well as groups. Randomization, 10% and nearly normal. Keep in mind the nearly normal, uh, smaller sample size, n is less than 15. We really want it to look like a normal model. For somewhere in the middle, 15 to 40, it's okay to use a T value or a T model as long as the data are unimodal and reasonably symmetric. And for really large sample sizes, we don't really have to worry about it at all. Now, if I'm looking at this question with the battery life, and again, note that the reason that I chose the test that I did is I'm dealing with two independent samples, independent because there were two randomly selected samples, and we're finding an average, so it's a mean. That's why it's a difference of means, and we're going to call it, we'll talk about that more in a minute, but it's a two sample T interval. And I've checked the conditions here, and again, I'm not going to go into a lot of detail with that. I will point this one out to you. The nearly normal condition, I chose to create a QQ plot for each, each set of values. And when I did that, as you can see, I feel like there is a pretty strong pattern that it's not really fitting that normal model or T model very well. So if it were me, I probably would not continue with this. I would say that this is enough to make me feel like I shouldn't use this model. But for the sake of practice, we're going to continue anyway. Now I do want to point out something I said we would come back to where I said the difference of means interval. So in a little bit, we're going to talk about paired data and how that's different. But it's important to understand that in this question, I'm going to be finding the mean of generic and the mean of brand name, and I'm going to be subtracting those values somehow. That's why we call it a difference of means, because we're finding the means and then taking the difference of them. So again, the same question, dealing with the difference. For our calculations, we are going to use StatCrunch. So let's pop over here to StatCrunch, and I'm going to go to Stat and T Stats, and here I have two sample, and I have data, because if you'll notice, I was nice enough to include all of that data for you. So here, you can kind of choose brand name and generic. Now, we already made our box plots and we already noticed that generic was larger. And so again, I'm going to cheat because it's the best way to do it. I'm going to cheat and put generic first because I like positive numbers. Now, what would happen if I did it backwards and did brand name first and generic second? Let's take a look at what that looks like. Um, again, we're dealing with a 95% interval, so I'll go ahead and do it kind of backwards first. And notice what I'm ending up with. Oops. Let me go back for just a moment before I screw anybody up. Right here is very important. I have to uncheck pool variances. It's very complicated and in-depth discussion about pooling or not pooling. And for the sake of an intro stats course, just take my word for it that we will not be pooling our variances anytime we are dealing with means. 
So again, if I click Compute, I end up with the same two values that I have here, but these are positive and these are negative. So what's the difference? I put brand name first and then generic, and these values tell me that brand name lasts 35 minutes to two minutes less than generic batteries. Whereas over here, putting generic first, I'm saying generic batteries last longer than brand name batteries by 2.1 minutes to 35.1 minutes. So same exact conclusion, I'm just saying it a little bit differently. Either way, it's certainly correct. The only thing you have to worry about is making sure you show which one is which. So here's a question for you to try on your own. So please, please press pause, read over the question, and do the hypotheses, sorry, not the hypotheses. Um, go ahead and check your conditions, and then do the confidence interval in StatCrunch so you don't need to show any work. Keep in mind on this one that you do not have data, you have summary, so make sure you keep that in mind as you do your calculations. Okay, let's take a look at how we would do this one. Again, I would check all of my conditions first. I'm not gonna spend a lot of time on that, but they're there for you to read if you would like. This nearly normal condition, uh, we're not given that information anywhere in this question, and because we don't have data, we're not able to actually make the QQ plot, and so I'm just going to continue anyway, and the way that I'm gonna get around that is I'm going to add this sentence to my conclusion, assuming the data sets are nearly normal. Okay, so again, I've checked conditions. I said the conditions are met, so we'll use a student's T model and a two sample T interval. In doing the work here, I'm going to go to stat, T stats, two sample, and this time with summary instead. So again, it gives me all of this information and if you put it in the wrong order the first time and you end up with negatives, you can just go with it or you can cheat and change all of the numbers so that it gets to be positive. So the first one says um, the endoscopic surgery patients had 9.1 mean standard deviation of 1.2 and there were 12 of them. For the other group, we had 7.6 and we had... Uh, 0 0.4, so obviously this one I didn't even need to figure it out. 9.1 is greater than 7.6, sorry, it's getting late. Uh, sample size is still 12, and I'm looking at a not pooling variances and making sure I click on 95% and compute and I find my lower limit and upper limit. And again, note the way that I'm writing the conclusion. It all depends on which one I put first. So assuming the data sets are nearly normal, I'm 95% confident that the mean pinch strength of patients of endoscopic surgery exceeds, so that's because it was positive, the mean pinch strength of open incision patients by 0.713 kilograms to 2.287 kilograms.